Okay, um, growing up, I always made fun of cheerleaders, and I know a lot of my friends did too. I never took them seriously, and I thought they were just there, you know, just to entertain the crowd. But when I got into um, middle school, I actually joined cheerleading, and I realized that it's a lot harder than people think it is. Um, it takes a lot of time, and I think it should be considered a sport. Um, okay. The definition of cheerleading is the act of leading organized cheering such as at sporting events. And a lot of you have probably seen um, basketball games, football games, and the cheerleaders are just on the side looking pretty, uh, some of them. And um, nobody takes the time to appreciate the effort that they put into that. So um, the history of cheerleading in 1869, um, the first cheerleading experience was um, during a game between Princeton and Rutgers University, and it was all men. Um, for the first 25 years, it was entirely men; no women were allowed. And after that, uh, women ended up women now like dominate the sport. Um, so this is what a lot of people picture a cheerleader as: pretty and dancing, and just basically there to. Um, give um, men something to look at. Um, however, I don't think that's what their, um, their purpose is. So uh, cheerleading follows the guidelines of what a sport is. Um, technically, a sport is a physical activity um, or a competition against or with an opponent, opponent governed by rules and conditions under which a winner is declared. And primary purpose of the competition is a comparison of the relative skills of the participants. So, um, during a cheerleading competition, you compete to win, you're judged based on every move you made. Um, there's a lot of guidelines and rules that you have to follow for safety reasons and um, for, uh, you have to really work on um, your show, like how, you, how you're presenting your team. Uh, it requires a great amount of physical activity and time. Um, when you're at a cheerleading competition, you're performing, but you also have to, like I said, you have to like show yourself. And nobody realizes how hard it is to smile and be yelling at the same time and dancing and tumbling and things like that. So there's a lot of um, components put into one. Um, it's very dangerous and risky. There are many, many injuries. Um, from cheerleading. There is no protective gear worn. You basically have to trust your teammates and hope that they um, protect you as well as they can, especially um, if you're a flyer in the air during stunting. Um, according to the United States Sports Academy, uh, cheerleading is the number one female sport and the number two in catastrophic injuries um, behind football. Let's see. Uh, if it was considered a sport everywhere, um, cheerleaders would receive proper mats and um, training facilities, but because it's not always considered a sport, it's often considered a club, um, they don't receive the necessary um, safety um, facilities like that. Um, let's, all right. A little bit yeah. It's kind of dramatic, but
Um, another reason it should be considered a sport is because it's a combination of two other sports, um, which is dance and gymnastics. And um, just like any other sport, football, baseball, basketball, you practice all the time, every day, even longer than another sport would because you need to be perfect, basically. And in order to um, be perfect, you need to trust everyone and really have a, um, it's really a team effort. So that's why I truly think it should be considered a sport. Were you, uh, did you ever sustain a, an injury? Did you fly at all? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, you were? I'm too big to fly. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, is there thoughts of outlawing, or have they started to make, make rules against some of that ac acrobatics that, that have people really up um, on the top of pyramids and things? I know we do it at the games. Yeah. Uh, there, but, well, there's like, like, there's like high school cheerleading. Like, my high school, we competed. Um, and then there's like competitive cheerleading, which is like the more like, like the, I don't know how to say it, like the crazier like things like that, where like it's some of what we saw. Yeah, in. yeah. So, but like high school, it's it's like toned down a bit because they don't want you to get hurt. You know, it's like school liability and stuff like that. But um, there's a lot more like rules going into it as the time goes on and more injuries are taking place. You mentioned the ratio of. of, of Originally starting with men and now being, mm -hmm. you know, almost a, a, a full woman sport. I mean, is it like ninety percent women, or I know there's some males yeah. at the college level. Yeah, it's like all girls. What about the uh, any of the professional teams, the, uh, the Cowboys and you know those famous cheerleaders from? No, Minnesota. I don't think there's any men on the Cowboys cheerleading team. <laughs> no. I just, I just never, you know. Um, know. When you get into college, it, like not necessarily at Siena, but um, like the bigger schools, like. Uh, I went to a lot of cheer cheerleading camps, and it, there was a lot of men, um, like, instructors, and they went to schools like LSU and UCLA and stuff like that. So, like, the bigger schools like that, they have more men cheerleading, but um, I don't see a lot of it around here, really. Well, it just would seem to be if there were more physical strength. That yeah, they definitely have a lot more physical strength. That would, would aid in maybe curbing some of the injuries, because it can be yeah. pretty, pretty severe with yeah. it. Yeah, but um, also that. men... They can do like the like they can do like one man stunts where like it's just like them like holding people up, which you rarely see girls doing that. So I don't know. That's also I guess it increases the danger. <laughs>